As a teacher, I think of a traditional lesson plan. You've got to first introduce it. You have to talk about the vocabulary and what that means. Really then delve deep into the concept, pictures, visuals, you know, going out and seeing it, being in the environment, coming back and reviewing it, and then, you know, assessing do they really understand what this is. And because this is such an important concept, and something that my students may not be thinking about right now, but will want to think about in the future, we need to keep revisiting it. So we need to keep having that lesson over and over and over and over again. We're gonna start with preparing for our outing, and then we're gonna to head to Wheeling. Once we get there, we're gonna take a tour of the supportive housing building there. And some residents who live there are going to kind of share with us their experience of supportive housing and you'll get to listen to them and hopefully ask some questions if you have any. You may be like, what is supportive housing? Okay, so we're gonna go into this apartment building. It's gonna look like an apartment building, okay? Like any other apartment building that maybe you live in right now or that you've driven past before. There is one bedroom, two bedroom, and three bedroom apartments. That means that if this is someplace you wanna live in the future, you can have roommates. You can split your bills. You'll always have someone around, right? You do have to pay rent, which means you have to pay money in order to live there. And you will have a landlord, which you're like landlord. If you've never heard that word before, it's basically like somebody who's the boss of your apartment. So there's somebody overseeing you living in that space because they want to make sure that you treat it nicely, like your own bedroom at your own house, right? That you keep it clean. You take care of it. If something's leaking, right, you clean it up or let them know. Supportive housing is to live semi-independently. So that means mostly independent, but with a little help. That's what semi-independently means, okay? So most of the time, you would be on your own, but there would be times when you would need a little bit of help, and that's okay. More into what supportive housing is. So I said that you have to pay rent, right, which means you have to pay money to live in this apartment. And supportive housing sets a limit. They only require you to pay 30% of the total money that you make. But the rest of your money, so Kayla, you got your phone handy? 100% would be all of it, right? And if you spend 30% on rent, so what is 100 <laughs> minus 30? 70. So 70% 70 of however much money you make, you get to decide how to spend. Does that sound like a lot? 70%? Yeah, yeah right? 30% is really small, okay? So the rent, the rent is only 30%, but the rest, so 70%, you get to decide how to spend, okay? So some ways you may decide to spend it would be on food, obviously. Y'all got to eat right? Entertainment. So let's think about a monthly budget. 30% is spent on rent. So just the blue part. But the whole rest of this pink part, you get to decide how to spend. Okay. So let's come up with some lists of things that you would have to spend money on to live on your own. So you have to pay rent. Your monthly budget would include rent. And that's some money that you pay in order to live in that place right, in order to live in that apartment. What other things do you have to pay for? Oh, very good. Good, Ben. Yes. Guys, it's like I like prepped you for this. Electricity. Okay, what else do you have to pay for? Shopping? Yep. Job coach, yes, right? How are you gonna get to that job? Sorry. Bus, what is the bus considered? Or a car. Or, or, a car. or a car, yes, so you need transportation, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna say, um, job coach slash transportation. You said rent, 30%, which we've talked about, and let's say that's gonna be about $225. All right, you guys mentioned food. Let's say you spend about $200 a month on that. 
electricity, right, and phone, maybe about $50 a month on each of those. Entertainment, so you can go bowling, go watch a movie, right? Go out to eat, maybe buy some clothes for yourself. We'll say that's about $100 a month. Then we have to put in transportation if you got a job and you're starting a new job, so maybe you need to help some, pay someone to help you get started with that job. So that's a job coach. If they helped you two hours a week for one full month, that'd be about eight hours. And I'm estimating that in transportation about $125 a month. So Kayla, you got that uh, calculator handy still? So if we take all these parts of our budget, so the 225 and the 200, and I want to know how much this total budget would be for a whole month. So 225 plus 200 plus 50 plus 50 plus 100 plus 125. 750. 750 is about how much money you get per month if you get SSI. I think most people at your age right now, right, may not be thinking about wanting to move away right now, but I think um, in the future, you may want a little more freedom, right? Maybe you want to have your own friends over and you don't want to have to ask permission to have your own friends over. Maybe not right now, right? Maybe not right when you guys leave here at 22, but maybe when you're like 28, 30, right? Right, and that's okay. We just want you to know that it's an option for you, right? That this does exist, that you could live on your own and stay in budget, right? and have your own control. You don't have to go to bed when mom says you have to go to bed, right? And you don't have to eat what mom made for dinner to eat, right? And you don't have to follow the rules that someone else set for you. You can make your own. Then I need that brain and phrase yes. at like 26, 27. Mm -hmm. Totally. Ben, you are speaking my language, Ben. You are right on the right track. You want to start thinking about it now, right? So that it's something that you can have happen in the future. Yes. Yes. I'm so glad you're here, Ben. Let's talk about the difference between staying at home and living semi-independently, right? Okay, so right now, you all live at home, right? You live with your family, okay? So let's talk about what that looks like. These people are familiar, right? You've literally known them since you've been born, right? You're, you have your own room. You probably feel comfortable and safe, okay? Tell me what else you like about living at home. How does it make you feel? Safe, yeah. What else? What do people do for you that you don't have to do for yourself maybe? Cleaning up, yeah. Christian, does Nana decide what to cook for dinner and does she cook it? Or do you cook dinner? Right, Nana decides, right? Yeah, yeah. so they decide and cook meals. And they probably shop for that stuff too, right? So they think about, okay, what, they're, what you are going to eat for dinner. They decide that. They go shopping for it. They make the food for you. Like Jackie said, they also clean it up for you too, right? Yeah? yeah? Right? Okay. Yeah. But they have to think about, right? Like, yeah. okay, we have to make sure that the place is warm enough so people don't get cold. We want to make sure we pay our water bill because that would really suck to not have water in the morning when you go take a shower, right? want to make sure that there's food in the house to eat. Okay, so these are things that other people, your family, is thinking about, and that's what it's like to live at home. Maria, do you do your own laundry? No. <gasps> right? Christian, do you do, who does the laundry? Do you do your laundry? Or is Nana do your laundry? I do it. You do it? I think so. 
You get to create your own schedule. So you get to decide when to wake up in the morning. You get to decide when to go to bed. Oh. Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh. Oh. No. Right? You get to decide um, when you're going to eat breakfast, when you're going to eat lunch, and when you're going to eat dinner. Is someone else going to cook it for you? No. Yeah. Who's gonna cook it for you, Aki? Not your roommate. You are, right? Here's a big one. Who decides what you, what you watch on TV at home? Maria, who makes that decision? <laughs> yeah. You get to decide where things go, right? How often you clean, right? If you wanna rearrange, Furniture, you get to do that. It's your own space. Right? And if you need help with something, you get to decide who helps you. I want to tell you more about the specific place that we're going today. So this morning, the building we're going to is called Phil Haven. Okay? And it is an actual place that you can apply and live there. So this is a real place that you could actually live. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's what it's. Real Haven. Yes. You can pick. You can apply and you can live there. Yes. Like for real, for real. It was built for people with disabilities, right? Other people with disabilities, adults with disabilities, live there right they built it and it's close to public transportation so if you don't drive you would have public transportation close by to get get you to the places that you need to go they offer vocational assistance right right in that building they also offer empowerment and support services right in the building okay so there is help and support right there if you need it Ben, you're grinning real big. Does this make you excited? <laughs> right? I know, right? It should. I bet you have questions. And I don't want you to forget them. So I'm going to give you an index card. And if on one side, you could put your name, but on the other side, if you want to write down some questions.